And speaking of civil war, I always thought the catalyst for the second American civil war would be the Democrats trying to take away America's guns by leaning into a similar gun buyback scheme that Australia employed in 1996. Now, because Australians by and large don't have the same kind of attachment to their guns that Americans do, given there is no constitutionally enshrined right to self-defense in our constitution, God help us, we took it pretty much lying down. That, of course, would not happen in America if the same strategy were applied for obvious reasons. Ergo, that's the logical starting point for America's Civil War 2.0. However, if there is to be a second iteration of the Great War, it seems the issues at the southern border are closer to causing it than gun rights. Yes, since I've been off the air, the great state of Texas has been feuding with the Biden administration over who has the authority over the Texas border. And no wonder the situation at the border is dire, with people smugglers sliding illegal immigrants into the country at eye-watering rates, with surprising perks. Just ask Jesse Waters, who outlined the situation on Fox News. And migrants are slithering into San Diego County like there's a Black Friday sale. Watch human smugglers here drop off macked out migrants. Look at these characters. Not a woman or child among them. Migrants from India, China, Turkey trotting right around the wall that Biden stopped building. They get handed welcome to USA flyers for breaking into our country that spells out the VIP perps they get under Biden. Ready? If you're a gay illegal, you will be given the option of going to a shelter where you will receive legal, medical, and onward travel assistance. Onward and upward, adios, amigo. Now, if you're a Latin lesbian, bust into our country, Biden gives you free housing, free lawyers, free doctors, and free tickets to travel anywhere in Los Estados Unidos. And that's not all the perks for gay illegals. Free food and drink, free Wi-Fi, and a free assistant like Johnny who will help you find your long lost uncle or cousin. You just show up to the border, yo soy queer, and Venezuela scares me. Right this way, Juan. Make yourself comfortable in our lounge or you're connecting flights on us. May we start you with a beverage? And if Juan feels he's trapped in Juanita's body, Gavin Newsom will give him a sex change on your dime. Fact check me, I dare you, this is all true. Considering this, it's no wonder certain American citizens are taking matters into their own hands. Former military officers have taken up arms and have begun patrolling our side of the border. They call themselves Arizona Border Recon. Strapped with heavy artillery, they intimidate smugglers and keep them south of the border. And the leader of that group, Tim Foley, joins us now. Tim, describe your daily operations on the border. Well, what we do, uh, and thanks for having me, Jesse. Uh, where we operate in is an area that is known for gotaways. And that's a term that the government uses for, they've picked them up either on camera or ground sensors, but there's not enough agents left because they're dealing with all the other ones coming in. Uh, so we go into the areas where the gotaways are. Gotaways don't want to be caught by Border Patrol because they've been uh, deported multiple times for either crimes in this country or crimes in their countries. Not only that, we've had another trucker convoy, except unlike its Canadian counterpart, which was protesting Canadian Prime Minister Justin Castro's, uh, <coughs> sorry, I mean Justin Trudeau's draconian COVID policies, this trucker convoy is protesting America's open southern border. Calling itself the Army of God, thousands of trucks headed south this week and on Saturday will split into three different rally points along the border. After meeting here, they're going on to Dripping Springs, Texas, which is just outside of Austin. And from there, the group is going to host a pep rally and split up, either going to Yuma, Arizona or Camado, Texas. As you said, all of this to express their outrage and concern about the record migrant encounters at the southern border. They hope their activism will inspire leaders to do something about it. And they also hope that they can show their support for Texas leadership as, in their view, stands up to the federal government on border enforcement. 
So the convoy, plus the Texas federal government feud, plus the Arizona border recon, plus the general razor-sharp tension between Republican and Democrat majority states, is likely leaving a lot of people thinking that America's cold civil war might be about to, you know, heat up. And speaking of hot wars, it looks like President Joe Biden is leading America and by proxy the rest of the world into a hot one, thanks to his vow to respond to the drone attack by a radical Iran-based Islamist group on an American military base near Jordan, which killed three American soldiers and injured more than 30 others. It's the perfect escalation of the conflict in the Middle East, and certainly America's war hawks will be doing the happy dance at the chance to enter into a good old global conflict. America's military-industrial complex pumps on. Which leads us to the all-important question. Would any of this have happened had Donald Trump been returned to the White House in 2020? Would Vladimir Putin have invaded Ukraine? Would the southern border be as porous as Swiss cheese? Would Hamas have attacked Israel? Would Afghanistan have fallen to the Taliban? Well. We all know the answer to those questions, and it is a resounding no. So, who should Americans vote for in 2024? Well, I'll let comedian and commentator Terence K. Williams do the honors. Send this to the people who still want Joe Biden to be president, because I'm going to give it to them raw. I'm going to give it to them how it is, because they need to hear this shit, okay? Think about when President Trump was in office. Think about it. Were, did he start any new wars? Wars? No? No? Did he? Did he? Did he? Was the country doing great be, before COVID? Huh? Yeah. It was, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did you, uh, did we have all these damn problems that we are having now? Hmm? No, we did not. No, 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 we did not. Did he keep his promises? Yeah, he did. Uh-huh. Now, look at what's going on now. Look at what's going on now. Yeah. You're not doing too well, right? The country is in shambles, right? Right? Enough said, really. <laughs> 